Hi, so my name is Joe Iacobidis and I'm going to be presenting some work today that we've done looking at designing for reflection in games. Right, so reflection is generally seen as a key component in transformational change. However, there's a lack of empirical work looking at games and reflection, particularly in terms of how we can design games to report both reflective processes and outcomes. There's also conflicting ideas about the role of distance in persuasion and reflection within the context of, of serious or persuasive games. So Kaufman and colleagues argue that the distance between players and the game should be increased um, to avoid reactance. So you want to make sure your players don't feel threatened um, by what's being presented in the game. Whereas Khaled suggests that actually what you want is a decrease in this distance because you want to ensure that players are having a relevant experience that they can identify with and connect to their day to day lives. So in terms of what we were hoping to do, we wanted to explore how game design can support reflection. And we chose this context of work life balance and particularly student life balance. And that's because uh, students in higher education often have um, a number of challenges um, that they face after sort of being away from the home, usually for the first time. And these can affect uh, their well-being. And in essence, what they need to learn how to do is to balance socialising with it, with the pressures of, of studying and, and looking after themselves. So we developed uh, the Student Life uh, Balance game, uh, which was a simple visual novel style game where we asked players to make decisions about how they wanted uh, to spend their time. And these decisions would have uh, different impacts on four different dimensions of, of, of work life balance. So you've got academic study, you've got physical health, you've got social life and you've got finances as well. Uh, we asked players questions in different ways. Sometimes it was a yes or no uh, decision. Other times they, they got to pick uh, out of one of three options. Um, but at the end of the game, so at the end of that term or academic semester, um, they were told uh, or they were given an assessment regarding those four dimensions. So in the example we've got here, the student did a pretty good job of looking after themselves in terms of their physical health. Um, and they had a great time socialising. Um, but this seemed to be at the expense of academic study and, and finances as well. Now, going back to this idea of distance, we decided to create two different versions of the game that, that only kind of had a subtle kind of difference. So in the first version, we asked players to, to play as themselves. Um, but in the second one, we asked them to, to take on the role of Alex and they referred to Alex um, throughout the game as well, because we wanted to explore this idea of distance and how it might impact uh, reflection. And in terms of the evaluation, we uh, asked players to come in and play the game uh, for about 10 minutes. So they played through the whole game once. We then interviewed them um, to discuss their experiences. And then a week later, we had a, a follow up interview via phone or Zoom where we asked them uh, a little bit more about what happened since playing the game. 32 participants took part. Half of them played the U version, half of them played the Alex version. And these were mostly uh, undergraduate students from across different departments. Now, to analyze the data, we did two things. So the first um, step was to look at the um, reflective outcomes. And here we used a, a deductive analysis using Fleck and Fitzpatrick's levels of reflection framework. And then we also looked at reflective processes. Um, so how reflection occurred um, as a result of, of playing the game. And to do that, we did an inductive reflexive thematic analysis. And here are the outcomes of, of reflection and the, the key ones to pay attention to here are the ones in red. So according to Fleck and Fitzpatrick's hierarchical framework, um, these are levels of reflection kind of um, increase in complexity and depth um, as you go higher up. And what we can see here is that two thirds of our players experience reflection of some kind. And there's a suggestion there that the players who um, were engaged in the Alex version, um, it resulted it resulted in them having more in-depth experience of reflection. So you've got reflective description, which was where they're starting to kind of make connections between the game and their day to day lives. Dialogic reflection, where they're sort of making uh, more in-depth kind of questions about this and then transformative reflection when it actually impacts the way they think or, or behave outside of the game. So to give you an example of a transformative outcome here, um, we've got somebody talking about being on a bus with their friends, thinking about whether they're going to go to the cinema or not. And at first they weren't going to because the, the prices had gone up. Um, but actually, um, then they thought back to the game and was like, well, actually, you know, what effect is that going to have on my social life? So, so let's go. And they ended up going and, and having a really good time. So in terms of the process of reflection and, and the themes, there were four themes here, um, along with in the paper, we, we discussed more some of the barriers um, to these themes as well. 
But the first theme here is focusing on, on making um, sensible consequences visible. So this is really about ensuring uh, that the game communicates to players what the effects of their actions might be and, and ensuring that those effects seem to make sense to, to the people playing the game. It's like my life is, is really about relevance. So how relevant players found the game and, and how much of a connection they could make between the game and their personal life. The space between Alex and I was only relevant to the Alex version where people kind of jumped between using different pronouns to explain their experience. And then finally, triggers in everyday life was about how reflection often required something to happen outside of the game for people to, to reflect on it um, outside of gameplay. Now, as this is a short presentation, I'm only going to focus on, on the third theme as, as that's the one that was different um, in both, um, th that shows the difference between the two versions of the game. So here's a quote to illustrate that. You can see how the player is using both I pronouns and also referring to Alex. Um, but what's particularly interesting about this quote is that they um, are reflecting on um, how they consider themselves to be quite thrifty and, and a better manager of finances than Alex was, um, and also go on to think about their grades as well. Now, what happened in the Alex version is that though there was a kind of um, potential threat here to, to personal identity, players still managed to go on to reflect about the game by comparing themselves to, to Alex in different ways. Whereas in the U version of the game, if there was this similar kind of threat to, to sort of their, their own personal identity, this seems to obstacle um, further reflection later on. Now, there is still a barrier here. So unfortunately, not all players took notice of Alex. Um, so they didn't realise they were supposed to play as someone else. Um, and that's something that perhaps could be made a bit more salient. So what our findings show is that both versions of the game do appear to lead to reflection in the majority of players, though they also suggest that those who played the Alex version were more likely to experience higher levels of reflection. So our findings don't only just show that a relatively simple game can encourage reflection in players, it shows that even small design changes can have an impact on both the process and outcomes of reflection. Now, the other thing we'd like to draw attention to is the, um, the concept of distance and how it can manifest in different ways. So on one hand, you've got the distance between the game environment and the real world. And here we'd argue that reflection can be facilitated um, by providing a relevant context to players so that the game actually feels close to their experience. But we'd also like to highlight that there's also the distance between the player and the player character to consider. So here, by supporting role playing as someone else, um, the game can also support reflection um, by being a little bit less close to their experience, but providing that further space for reflection to occur. Thank you very much.